So welcome to today's episode where I'm going to take you guys around Japan and pretty much all the places I went to to share my thoughts, my feelings and things I liked and disliked. And so we start off in Asakusa, one of the places that you've 100% seen all over social media where a majority of tourists come here to dress up in kimonos, try some street food and get their fortune told. Excellent fortune, trouble disaster. And so we saw this very traditional looking 200 year old restaurant. It looks fine at first, but yes, it sells this, which is water lodge. It was an interesting experience, and I wouldn't say I would like to try it again. Round two, take two. So another unique dish that you can try in the Asakusa area is monjayaki. It's pretty similar to okonomiyaki if you've ever seen that, but it's a lot less dense. In my opinion, I liked okonomiyaki a bit more just because you have that texture. Whereas here, it's like think of melted cheese, I would say. If you like the crispy bits of melted cheese and the seafood parts, then you might enjoy this. But I think it's worth a try regardless. So I didn't get to try this place, but I did see every single time I passed it, there was a big, big line waiting to go inside. But let's start moving a bit outside of Asakusa. The outskirts of um, Asakusa, between Asakusa Sensuchi Temple and Ueno, not sure what this street is, but you get a very nice view of the sky tree. But then there's also so many craft stores. So there's the knife stores, I saw a fabric store earlier as well. So if you're planning to pick up a chef's knife for yourself or for a gift, this is the perfect place to go, just because it's so close to everything else. And um, I don't exactly know anything about chef's knives, but they look pretty expensive. I saw a few knives that were at least $300 each, so maybe that's a pretty good decent one. I'm not too sure. <laughs> I definitely recommend visiting this place during the sunset evening time as well. Just because it's just because it gets super packed around 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. But let's head to Team Labs, which is the other very popular tourist destination in Tokyo. So I'm not gonna cover too much of this just because it's like there's so much information out there about this place. But usually every year or every few years this place refurbishes and all the exhibitions inside changes. But I really like digital museums, so I'm happy with the photos I took here and uh, the experience I got from here. So when I visited Odaiba, which is this section that the Team Labs is on, I found this cool festival happening called Niku Fez, which is pretty much a meat festival. So every single one of these stores sells a different kind of Wagyu beef. So if you're in the area when this festival is on, I would highly, highly recommend coming here. Unless you're vegetarian, of course. I think there was at least 20 stores here, which each store sold a different thing. Like look at all that meat you could buy and try. It was uh, quite a lot, to be honest. Oh, and you can't forget about the rice. So many different stores and the music was actually pretty good. Very happy, it was actually really fun. <laughs> If you ever find yourself in Japan and you have the opportunity to go to a festival, I'd highly, highly recommend it. The Japanese, their events go hard. Well, at least compared to Australia, at least. And so I decided to try one beef bowl, and it was this kind of wagyu strip kind of thing. It costed me about 15 AUD, and the meat was really, really good. Very thin. This hat was part of the festival. Cost me $15 and I really really like this hat. Well there's also a few other reasons why you'd come to a dive bar and it's this great Statue of Liberty, Japan edition. No, but this place is a giant indoor theme park, amusement park kind of thing, with roller coasters and everything. That wasn't my kind of thing, but I popped by. There was this huge shopping mall with this art aquarium inside, similar to the Ginza one that you'll see in the future. Basically, 
lots of fishes and lights. There's a bunch of other things to do here as well that I'll just put down here, just because I skipped a lot of it. My main reason for going to a diver was for the Niku Fez, the meat festival, and so kind of breeze past it, but definitely look into some of these things here labeled on your screen right now. Alright, so for this last section, we're going to talk about the three cities that a lot of people go to. Shibuya, Shinjuku, and Harajuku. And like on the screen right now, I'd recommend starting from either of the S's, Shibuya or Shinjuku, and then walking all the way to the other side. It's about 30 minutes to walk from one S to the other S. And if you walk, you get to see all the different shops that are there. So, we're going to start off at Shibuya. A lot of shopping and notable activities around here like Gachapon. I've also seen a lot of people go around in the Mario Karts that everyone talks about. Make sure you get an international driver's license if you're doing this because they've changed laws regarding this but we had to get some sushi. Generally people go to this sushi train chain called Kuro but we wanted to try something different, a bit higher class I would say. For three people it costed us about 120 AUD and we ate until we were full. So not too expensive and it was very delicious. All right, so we're gonna head to our next location now that dinner is done. Harajuku, which is directly in between of Shibuya and Shinjuku. Will you visit this place if you're heading to those places? So this place is known for a lot of shopping and unique goods, I would say, that you'll see in a bit. But the main reason this place is popular is because there's also a lot of the anime dressed up girls around. There's a lot of like themed restaurants and cafes as well, like this one. Pompurin. I remember seeing an otter one, a dog one, a cat one for sure, because I was allergic to it. But lots to shop around and explore at this area. Perfect if you love novel things as well. I really thought about buying this for my cables and everything, but it's one of the things I decided not to, but I regret not buying it, you know? But one of the famous foods around Harajuku are the crepes. Like, I swear this line was long from day until night as well. So Japanese crepes are just one of those things that you just gotta try. It's, it's not too expensive and it's a very nice dessert. But that's not all to Harajuku. If you go outside of Takashida Street and find these sprawling alleys, you'll find a lot of little mom and pop stores, vintage stores, all these different kinds of stores that sell really cool things like this sticker shop. They wouldn't let me film inside, but let's just say I spent a good 30 bucks at least on stickers alone. But like definitely come here if you're into thrifting or buying vintage clothes. But you know what time it is again. It's meal time. So nearby is a Ichiro, one of those famous places where you kind of eat ramen by yourself. You don't interact with anyone really get some pretty decent ramen. Although I know that there's a lot of better places and everyone says that Ichiran is kind of mid, I just like it for convenience to be honest. A majority of these stores are actually 24 seven so you can get ramen whenever you feel like. This is another cool spot that people usually come to take photos of, but in fact, it's just a lot more shopping. So after you've shopped to your heart's content, you can start heading towards Shinjuku where there's a big nightlife, I would say, although it's not all PG. So this tower was recently opened and you can get a pretty good view of the entire Shinjuku area from it for free. But the main attraction is this super, super cool arcade. There's like a section for trading cards, there's a section for gachapon. But wow, this big crane here is the first I've seen. Like, look at the, the sheer size of this. And I even got to witness someone win something. Another part of this tower is this 
kind of food dining bar area, which is usually pretty busy. Um, if you want food and alcohol, then this is a pretty cool place to go. It's called a yoko which is like an eating dining area. But if you head out, there's a lot of bars and places to go and places to eat. But just be careful because this is still considered as a red light district. But for a midnight stack, <laughs> there's also this place called Kamakura, which is like a 24 hour noodle joint. It's very budget friendly and very, very filling, I would say. For about 10 to $15, you can get a full meal with set side chicken and this giant heap of noodles. Like, this is ungodly amount of noodles. Like, it's literally noodles with a side of soup, man. Like, there's just so many noodles here. Rest assured, even though I eat a lot, I couldn't finish this entire bowl and all the sides. So, if you're looking for value for money, well, you found it here. But if you're looking for a traditional experience, this place might be for you. These are kind of like the izakayas where there's like seven to ten seats in a single bar that serves food, yakitori, etc, etc. And each restaurant here is very small, I would say. Many of these places do charge a seating fee, so just be wary of that. But Shinjuku is a pretty good spot to kind of start your day trips out of Tokyo because there's a lot of train lines connecting from there as well. But realistically, it's a lot more shopping here and it's kind of like a business district. So because it was a rainy day though, I decided to pop into a cooker curry, a fan favorite that everyone either really likes or really dislikes. So I got the standard and it wasn't really mind blowing to be honest, like, it's okay for its price. But another cool thing around Shinjuku I found was this mystery theme park. Like it's this giant escape room I think. Every single one of these is a different escape room. And yeah, I wasn't gonna do an escape room by myself because that's a little terrifying, you know? But I think it would be pretty fun in groups. But this last thing here is for all the photographers out there or anyone who likes cameras, I would say. Because there's a section in Shinjuku opposite the station there. There's just like an alley of a lot of little hole-in-the-wall stores that sell all these olden day lenses and everything like all these lenses you see in front of you right now they're at least 50 60 years old so even if you're not interested in actually buying anything i think it would be cool to go in and just like explore as well so this whole area has a bunch of camera stores just around the corner in shinjuku so very good if you look for cameras Used camera gear, junk camera, camera lens watch. Alright, so basically that's the end of this episode. I hope you had fun watching. And for the next one, we're going to be heading to Mount Fuji. So I basically spent a week around Lake Kawaguchiko. And I'm going to tell you my experience there. So make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.